Hey Bulldogs, Chris Bryant, the Computer Certification Bulldog here, and in today's video boot camp for you CCNA and CCNP candidates, we're going to go 180 seconds today instead of 90, because there are definitely some details about Telnet you need to know for the exam and for the real world, because you don't want to run into these at 2 o'clock in the morning like I did a long time ago, and go, oh, I didn't know you needed to do that. So I'm trying to save you some agony as well as helping you pass, of course, your CCNA and CCNP exams. Now, Telnet, you tend to think, of course, very straightforward, very simple deal. And for the most part, you're absolutely right. But let's look at a couple of these little hidden details that we need to be aware of. Let's go ahead and bring the live equipment up. And before we start the clock, you can see that I've got routers 1 and 2 here. And we're simply using a frame network 172.12.123.0. I've already sent our pings across, and I haven't changed anything since, as you can see. So nothing up my sleeve. And let's go ahead and start this lab and check out our Telnet, assuming that we need to go from router 1 to router 2. So let's go ahead and bring up our clock and go. So we're going to Telnet in, and no big deal, right? Because we've got our IP connectivity. We know everything's set. You get that call at 2 o'clock in the morning. It's like, hey, I don't need to drive to, say, downtown Richmond to look at that. I can Telnet in. So let's go ahead and just Telnet in. And that's just how you do it. And this is the first little gotcha you can run into with Telnet. And it's very self-explanatory. It's definitely not something you want to see at 2 in the morning, but it's very self-explanatory. It does require a password. And that's a really good thing, right? Because we don't want a default Cisco Telnet password uh, and then forget to change and then all of a sudden somebody got into the router that shouldn't have. So by default there is no Telnet access, no password, no default login, no nothing. So you go in, you take care of business, then you say hey I am going to set that Telnet password on that router. And we do that by putting it on the VTY lines and I want to show you something that I've seen debate about uh, on different boards over really a decade. So let me make sure I do it in a certain order, because this takes two commands. And I'm going to put a password in of all uppercase CCNA. Now, I've seen people say, well, you have to put the password in first, because if you put login first, that disables the whole thing. No, it doesn't. Make sure you read the entire message. Login is disabled on our VTY lines, 5 by default on a Cisco router, until the password is set. So as long as you enter both the login and the password commands in the situation, the order does not matter, as we'll see in just a moment. So you're feeling pretty good about yourself, and you set that Telnet password, and maybe you test it that day, maybe you don't. But then one night again, or early in the morning, you got to Telnet into that router. So you say, well, I'll just Telnet 172.12.123.2 and we're prompted for a password, as usual, by default on Cisco equipment, that prompt did not move and it didn't show the password. So hey, now I'm in router 2. So I'm in user exec and I'll just type enable and no password has been set. You have to have an enable password set in that scenario for someone to get into privileged mode. Except what most people do and what I want to show you here is the privilege level 15 command on the VTY lines. So now we've got three commands there. And when I tell it into 123.2 now, it's going to open it, ask me for a password, and notice this time I was put straight into privilege mode, into enable mode, so I can actually work now. So let's go ahead and stop that clock at 10 seconds. Good job there. A lot of little details you got to watch out for. Just going over them again very quickly. By default, we have no remote access on our Cisco devices, which is a good thing. If you put the login and password commands on, that's great. It will allow someone to Telnet, but they're put into user exec by default. And then, if there's no enable password set, and we saw that in action, if there is no enable password put here, then we can't get anywhere. So we were able to turn it into router 2, but we couldn't do anything after that. So what we did then is put privilege level 15 on the VTY lines, and then when we telneted in successfully, as you can see by that magic pound sign, we were indeed put into privilege mode or enable mode by default, and we could get some work done. Thanks for watching today's 3-Minute Video Boot Camp, and I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE 12933.